Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer. We're glad that you are joining us either through this live stream service or later through YouTube. Thank you for taking a part of your day to join us in worshiping our risen Lord. Uh, two quick announcements. Uh, one is if you are used to getting forward day by day, that's the daily devotional, uh, we can mail a copy of that to you. You can go to the Facebook page and click on the e-news and there you see a link that you can click on that link and say that you would like it and that will be mailed to you. And that is a gift from one of our parishioners. If you don't get our e-news, um, just email our administrator, Vivian, and her email address is vivian at administrator, uh, holycomforterchurch.org. And she will make sure that you are part of that list. Last but not least, uh, tomorrow morning, we begin our study of Acts. That is a Zoom link, and that will happen Monday at 11 a.m. and again Wednesday at 7 p.m. And again, you can find those Zoom links on the Facebook page. Thank you for joining us, and let us begin with the hymn, He is Risen. Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouths mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to the to Father, and to the, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together, Christ our Passover. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died he died, died to, to sin, sin once, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead. 
the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, and by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, Come let, let us adore, adore him. him. Alleluia. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 116, to be read in unison. I love, love the, the Lord, Lord because, because he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever, whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A reading from the first letter of Peter. If you invoke as father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine, mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I'm 
A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place here in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed before the God and all the people, And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem And they found the eleven gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God.
Good morning, my Telechurch family. Hope this message I bring to you today finds you well on this glorious sunny day, as Cindy reminded us earlier. Isn't that an unusual word, telechurch? And what does it mean? If we look at what we are doing today, right now, we can define telechurch as worshiping together separately. And that is such a simple way to put such a complicated process. Now, now I won't even go into the production side of bringing a single worship surface to many people in many different places. Let's talk instead about what it takes for you all, our congregation, to come together for worship separately. First, we have the logistics of it all, which is not unlike most Sundays. You're waking up, getting cleaned up, eating breakfast, and putting on your Sunday best. Because I know there's nobody out there in their PJs this morning, right? But if you're okay with that, God is too, because God takes you as you are. You then have to set up your computer or smart TVs and get ready to join our service. But this is where it changes for all of us. There was no warm smile at the door when you came in, no one handing you a bulletin, no one to hug and remind me how much you were missed since the last time you were worshiping together. But that all is fluff, right? It's fluff because you can still be present for the service without all of that from the comfort of your home. You see, Jesus is with you no matter if you are here at the Church of the Holy Comforter, your house, or the Holy Land itself. He is always with you. He is with us. But you may still feel like you are missing something. And you are. You and I are missing the recognition of Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Prior to the pandemic of COVID-19, you would see Cindy raise the host above her head and quietly break it. For us, it is a symbolic act, but as you just heard in the story of the road to Emmaus, for Cleopas and the other disciple, they witnessed Jesus take the bread and break it. And just as they then recognized Jesus, so do you. But isn't Jesus with you even when we don't have the Eucharist? Yes. Jesus is with you in all of our worship services, even those that do not have the Eucharist. But that is easy. Of course he is with us in our worship services. But I'm here to tell you he is alive and breathing outside of them also. Right now, who has a story they can tell about someone they know who is performing charity work or making face masks? or simply praying for others during this pandemic. Those acts are Jesus here and now. But sometimes we all get bogged down just as Cleopas and the other disciple did and fail to see Jesus. If you recall from the reading, Cleopas and the other disciple are downtrodden and meet Jesus on the way to Emmaus. Jesus listens to their troubles, then goes on to remind them of scriptures foretelling of these very events. But during all of this, neither of them recognized Jesus. How was that? He was walking with them and talking with them. By all accounts, he was a living, breathing person. But they did not see him for who he was. Was this because they were so consumed by their grief or because their eyes had been shielded from Jesus' glory. It is only later did, during the breaking of the bread where their eyes opened and they then recognized Jesus. Karen Shu, a psychologist from McGill University in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, explains it best when she writes, This incident, failing to recognize the Lord until he broke bread with them, shows more clearly than ever what a certain kind of perception was required, not to see the Lord in his glorified body, but to recognize who he was. So it is obvious that his body was real and solid enough, 
and their natural senses were not deceived. But still, the quality of the man they met did not register until something highly significant in their lives took place. And this was his symbolic act of breaking bread. And that, my friends, explains so many things in so few words. Jesus is here. He is whole and he is healed. And you can see that no matter if you see it in the act of making masks for a pandemic or the act of a child soothing a friend who has fallen down. Jesus is here. But if you do not always recognize he is here, that, that is okay. Jesus still walked and listened to Cleopas and the other disciple as they complained loudly about just how bad things were. And he will walk with you just the same, no matter if you acknowledge he is with you or not. Our church is participating in a fast from not only our normal worship routines, but also from the Eucharist. And just like any other fast, this fast has made us stop and reflect. It has made us think more about our worship services and how we can, better, how we can be better as we are together separately. More churches are working harder at, conscience, at, at connecting to their congregations through Zoom, FaceTime, Facebook Live, and other media. Choruses are singing from all different places, but are coming together, and people are praying more. And although it may be short-lived, social media is a place you want to go to instead of a place you go to. Jesus is here. Jesus is here because he said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, for, for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Notice, Jesus did not qualify this statement by saying, I am only with you when you have the Eucharist. He only said, where two or three gather in my name. So, so as we are all together today, together separately, he is in our midst. Jesus is here. Amen.
under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrage A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And to sustain, sustain us, us with your, your Holy Spirit. Spirit. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now the prayers of the people. Our Lord lives 
for death has no more power over him. And so we, God's holy church, proclaim the resurrection saying, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. God of life, in gratitude and great joy, we thank you for the gifts of Christ's resurrection. We especially give thanks for those celebrating birthdays, for Tim Shepherd. And we give thanks for those celebrating anniversaries, George and Linda Morgan, John and Jennifer Hudson, Glenn and Kathy Fuldham. We give thanks for the birth and safe delivery of Annalise Elliott. We give thanks for our partnership with Martinez Elementary School and the Claiborne at Westlake. On this day, give us hope, for Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Honoring the gifts of Christ's risen body, may we rise to serve all those whose needs keep them from seeing themselves as the image of God, for Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. For all who have need of the gift of Easter, for all who journey from illness to health, from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from loneliness to love, for all our brothers and sisters, that death may have no more power over us. We especially pray for those in need of healing, for Lindsay Kolsch, Linda Jewell, Billy Oldham, Richard Morgan, and for Mary Kelly came this request, special prayers for those who are alone as they shelter in place and for all who are on the front line in the battle against COVID-19. For Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. For all who suffer and all who mourn, that today the Lord God will wipe away all tears. We pray for the departed. The for Lord all who have risen. died from COVID-19 and from other illnesses. For Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. May we have the persistent faith of Mary Magdalene and the surprise belief of Peter and John. May we long to be God's sign of life in our world, for Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. God of life, we thank you for the mystery planted in us, the paradox of life from death and community from scattered disciples. We praise you for the dying which saves us from death and for the rising which brings us life. We pray as we live through Jesus, the risen one, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we say together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have, you have given, given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
My beloved, always remember how short life is and how little time we have to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind. And the rich and abundant blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. And now, kids, this is your time. This is your time to gather by the computer, the TV, wherever you are. And you need to know what I'm seeing in my mind's eye right now. Here's Charlotte, who just this week welcomed a new baby sister. Here's the Saunders family over here. Here's Lily and Finn. They're right here to my left. And over here, well, here's the Han family, all of them, and more kids than I can name. All of you are with me and with us. So I want you to shout out the dismissal as loud as you can from wherever you are. And y'all, that counts for you too here, okay? Because <laughs> you're having to be the other children. Right, Court? Yes. Okay, Court was excited by that. I hope you could tell that. All right, beloved. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.